Welcome back. Today we are down in the Cotswolds carrying out some roe deer management and fingers crossed catching up with a few fallow. It's the 2nd of April, so the roe bucks came in yesterday, 1st of April. Today I'm not doing any of the shooting. We've got a professional in for that job. So we've got Steve here. Hi. Um, so Steve is a deer manager down in the Cotswolds here on this estate and the surrounding area. So Russ has come down with myself as well. Russ is over on his ground trying to catch up with a few other deer and doing some prep work for the roebuck stalking in the summer. So he's putting some trail cameras out and topping up the feeders. And we're going to hopefully catch up with a few stray animals, aren't we? With a bit of luck. Yeah, with a bit of luck, although I am here and I'm a bit of a jinx and I. Yeah, and we've got good old English weather. It's sh As Steve just said, lovely weather look at the sky yeah but we're in the buggy this is a tall uh, polaris ranger 1000 petrol is it yeah sure so is. all the gear fingers crossed will uh, the back will be full of deer by the end of this evening what gear we're we using steve so you've got uh, similar to us you've got cooey gear on oh yeah the best yeah the best so. um rifle is my good old trusty ticker in 243 with Shrosky scope on top. Seen a lot of uh, deer over the years, but uh, it's still shooting reasonably straight. Ah, oh, that's all right then. Yeah, let's hopefully uh, see what we can do with it. Steve's the same as us, uses thermal. I think anyone that does a lot of deer management or even a lot of recreational stalkers now are investing in good thermals. So I'm on Pulsar, my dad's on Pulsar, Russ is on Pulsar. We've got a few other thermals which are hick as well, which they're, all of them now, to be fair, as long as you get a good brand, they all are a bit expensive, that's the only downside, but they all do a good job. So what are you using, Steve? You've Me, got... this is the old Helium XQ38. When you're doing a lot of deer management, uh, a, a thermal really does come in its, uh, to its own. Yep. Going into woodland, and if you're shooting a lot of fallow or muntjac, these are a game changer. So Steve's got his rifle out here, it's fully unloaded, bolts in his hand, as you can see. He's just going to run us through, a as I'd call it, this is a real deer manager's tool not rifle tool as you can see it's had its fair use of abuse but it's even got its own camouflage rust, rust camouflage <laughs> um, like adam said it is a tool if you want a, a reasonable quality sort of weapon you can't beat a ticker to be fair they take some battering and they do the business but well, we've showed off the rifle or the tool as i like to call it we're just going to show off what ammo you're using aren't we so what are you using at the moment i'm using fed raw in the 243, 75 grain. Some people will cringe using a, a light load like that because it's more environment in rain. But I do shoot a lot of foxes as well. And I'm not going to keep on changing zero for a different uh, grain bullets. The other alternative is have loads of different rifles, but that gets costly. Or you just go with a good all rounder like this. We've just locked up the buggy. We're going to go for a stalk over here and see what we can find. Just noticed as well. So Steve's using blazer sticks so we'll cover them in a minute because obviously you've seen my viper flex ones so that's another alternative as you can see it's a bit of a hot sort of day as it's terrible weather but if i flip the camera around now you can see the lovely terrain we're working with nice undulating valleys so fingers crossed there's some in one of these dips just feeding him on one of the feeders or up their droves so he might have spied someone down in this valley just using the Swarovski bins to have a quick look. So this is a prime example of why we're carrying out roe deer management around here. So they've had to put tree guards up everywhere and a lot of them have been smashed off by the roe deer. Um, and they've just, fallow has smashed all the edges out as well. So we didn't catch anything out down there. We've got back to the buggy. We're going to go for a drive round and have a look in the woods. Because as Steve said, deer are like humans. They ain't going to want to be out in this weather. You might catch the odd one or two out in this weather when they are a bit super hungry, but they're going to be tucked up away. So we're going to go and check some woodlands and uh, we've vacated back to the buggy with the heaters on. We're just going to go and stalk in on two road we've spotted. On the way down here, I've just spotted loads of strands of grass. And uh, Steve's just going to explain now what that's from. On the own row bucks where they're shedding their velvet, they rub their antlers to get all it off, and they're smashing all this. And, and you can see well the grass and that where they've been rubbing the ground uh, and, and thrashing their antlers up against these uh, elder bushes. It's the 2nd of April, the row bucks have just come into season. Yesterday, the bigger bucks have already scraped off the majority of their velvet. There's still a few out and about with velvet on, but the young ones are still 
scraping their velvet off, aren't they? Got pretty bad luck at the minute. The weather has been atrocious. As soon as we stepped out of the motor, it started raining. And it's not ideal conditions down here in the Cotswolds. A car's just come down a track over there and bumped about five to six row in that field. And they're running across now. They're about, what, 400 metres from us currently? Yeah, in the east end. Yeah, so they're a bit too far. You can see them just in the distance now. I'll swap over to the camcorder footage and you can see them running. <laughs> Sorry about the wind noise, but we reckon they've just gone over this bank. So it's a bit manic. It's all systems go at the minute. We uh, walked into that big group of fellow, as you saw. They give us a slip, just because naturally they heard the buggy. And then now there's two more road running towards us. So we're trying to cut them off. So this is where it pays off to have fully waterproof gear. Just trying to see if we can catch up with that row again. They were the other side of this little coppice down here. This is what you call real world stalking. The fellow we've caught back up with them in the uh, Polaris to run this next hedgerow. So we're going to try and sneak along, keeping it nice and low, keeping the rifle in a safe place, pointing down with the safety catch on. And this is the difference between recreational stalking and deer doing a job. So we're out in this lovely weather. We're determined to get one. We've just got to climb through the edge. go around the deer to get a safe backstop and get the wind right so then we've got a bit more time just taking it slow and steady trying to get over this uh, stubble crop as quiet as possible even though it is like a wet boggy marsh and yes this is where you wonder why you're not sat at home watching the tv or sat at home watching shooting videos like yourselves with a cup of tea on the go and some biscuits uh, fingers are crossed they're just round the corner, so Steve suspects they're going to be round this corner. So he's just setting up and having a peek down the ride. Looks like we're in the good. So we've had that one, we're going to quickly get out on the open fields and see if we can catch up with the rest of them. So even though we've got a bit of adrenaline and a bit of buck fever as most people like to call it, obviously safety is still number one paramount. So rifle still pointing in a safe direction with the safety on. So we've just had one deer, um, we've had a bit of technical difficulties with these plaza sticks. So they've come undone haven't they? When you're climbing through bushes and stuff they uh, soon catch on stuff and undone them. But we fixed them. So we're just approaching that fallow deer. Looks like it's a little pricket. Yep, so doing the blink test. Happy that's dispatched. So obviously we'll unload the rifle now and then we'll bleed this deer here. See the buggy roof just over there by that oak tree? No meat damage for that one. Russ will be happy with that. That'll go into Shropshire game. Link in the description. As said before, Steve's just said this deer, obviously it's an ideal candidate, like when we were up north, we were trying to get some prickets out, or this would be classed as a nobbler down here. Should you call yeah, it a pricket yeah, or a nobbler? It, it's, it's, it's never going to make anything special. It's, you know, it's crappy order. We're going to bleed the deer now, because we've got to uh, go back over towards the mule. So what are you using there? Mike Robinson knife. Nice. Well done, Mike. Really good, good knife. Keeps a good edge on it. So just in the sternum. Poke it, poke it around, and then pump the stomach, or this front shoulders, and you can see that coming out. Obviously this has all got to be in black and white, but you can see how that's effective. Leaving that in will taint the meat. Yeah, looks like you've done that before mate, you, look, you're uh, professional. One, one, one or two times before. If you shoot them in the chest, it bleeds out in the, in the, in the cavity. 
So when you growl it, you'll get all the bloody grushing out. When you shoot them in the neck or in the head, you have to do this because obviously the heart, lungs haven't been damaged. Yeah. And another reason for neck shooting, I'll just add, is you don't get the shot splatter, as some people call it. So in the engine room as such, where he's just been pumping the front shoulder, so obviously come up the front leg traditionally as you're taught on your DSC-1, and then just go an inch behind, just there. And uh, if you shoot them there, depending on what bullets you're using, if you're soft points, you're normally okay, aren't you, Steve? But if you're using ballistic tips like yourself, then there's normally quite a bit of shot splatter, um, which you'll notice when you're caping off the deer. When you take the jacket off, you might have a, a big area of blood splatter going up through there, which the butchers will deduct off. Like. So you've got to take so much of it off and so much wastage. Steve just mentioned about head or neck shooting, obviously, ideally textbook in the engine room, um, heart, lungs, obviously there's more, there's less chance of error ultimately, but when you're given that position of, how far would you say that is, 40 metres, if that, yeah. just 40 metres down the end there, um, the deer are stood perfect for a head slash neck shot, obviously neck is more ideal because there's less chance of error or naturally deer's heads do this a lot, so if you can get that opportunity, um, obviously, and you're confident with your kit, you do this day in, day out, you performed well. Especially on camera when you've got an idiot pointing the camera in your face. So well done, mate. So we're going to call it at that as we need to go and pick this one up and we'll show the process off of this. And this is what we like, getting the buggy nice and close, not damaging the farmer's field. We can cleanly, yeah, mate, I'll give you a hand. If you get the front, I'll get the back. Right, you ready? Three, two, one. Bit of teamwork, get that loaded in nice. No uh, excess mud getting all over the carcass. So I'll put the camera down and give Steve a hand and we'll load it in the back. The light's fading now, especially on the GoPro. It's a lot lighter in person than it's showing on the camera. But at the end of the day, I think we've uh, we've definitely put a shift in. We're wet, our thermals, everything's battered. That's why I've got to have good kit so it survives, especially more than ever you, because you do it day in, day out. Um, and you've performed. So well, congrats. You won't shoot deer. Saturday. No, I said that whilst we were stalking around the woods. You were you were full steam ahead and I was behind just doing a bit of talking and I said this is where you wish you were sat at home with your cup of tea and some biscuits, but you don't shoot deer at home, do you? Or you don't no. do this job at home. No, certainly don't. So jobs are good and we've performed. Let's get this back and let's get this sorted out. So we've just loaded in the deer, we're just about to set off to the larder. But Steve, on your estate here as the deer manager. You've got to log the deer where they've been shot and obviously keep track of what you've shot, the species, because um, obviously you've got roe, fallow and munt jack here. Yeah, what, what we do is all our records go online, so we've got a QR code that I can scan and then everything is logged straight onto our database. So we can put the date, species, sex, age, what three word, so that we know exactly the precise spot where it was taken for future references so we're back at the larder now um russ has been out he's had a munt jack he sorted that out so obviously we've got to sort this one out now so we'll get that out and get that nicely done and then uh, put in the larder